Hey y'all, Grandma Rose here. I discovered a video on my computer the other day that I recorded back in May, back mid-May. And you know, I don't want to wait until next May to publish it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that video up. Now it's about a, um, it's about a medicinal herb called Heal All, or All Heal, Prunella vulgaris. So I want you to see this herb and to understand its goodness, because it's a good one. Uh, right now, the flowers that I have left are dried. I've got dried stalks where the flowers were, dried seed heads, not heads, uh, it's a spike. But it's a tall, it's a tall inflorescence. If you know what the word inflorescence means, that means it's whatever kind of flower, type of flower, botanically it is. I believe this plant grows just about everywhere. So there are some places in the country that could still find it flowering. Just because it's finished here in the Deep South doesn't mean that it's not growing someplace else. So I want you to meet Prunella vulgaris, or All Heal, Heal All, some people call it, and I get to know this fable medicinal herb. They call it All Heal, or Heal All, because it works on a lot of different things. And this is what what heal all looks like in my garden. This is next to my front door. Or not exactly next to my front door, but it's in my front flower bed because it's that pretty. It can be used as an ornamental as well as a valuable medicinal herb. It's in the mint family. If you can see, it's got square stems. So it's in the mint family. and You see the, the flowers look like little orchids. It's just lovely. And I'm going to collect some of it today. I'm not going to collect this because I'm using it here as an ornamental and I want it to flower. And you can see there's several more buds in it here. So, that is what it looks like. Now let's get to what it actually does. What are its uses? Well, number one, it's edible. You can add it, uh, the flowers or the leaves, into a salad. So it's edible raw, and it's also edible as a pot herb, a pot herb, uh, cooked like you would spinach. So it, that, it, in that case, it's a good, it's something good to, to forage for. Not just for medicinal herbs, but actually for eating, because it, it is supposed to be tasty. I haven't eaten it, but they say it's tasty and it's good in a salad. So let's look at what some of the other things it's good for. So before we talk about its medicinal values, let's look at how the plant grows. I said before, it's in Lemiaceae. It's in the same family as mint. And if you notice, look in here, it has alternate leaves, a hairy stem that's square. The leaves are Elongate, They're not very long, but you can see that there's the length of my finger. This larger one at the top is about the, about the length of my middle finger. And as I said, they're opposite. And the flowers at the top, at the, at the end of the stem. And the flowers look like little orchids. I just love I just love mint flowers. This one is getting ready to, to flower. Has lots of buds on it. Now this is this is a perennial, so it will come back every year. Now I live in zone 8A, which is relatively warm. We still get freezes. Generally, our winter temperatures don't go any colder than just a little bit below, below 20 degrees, and they don't stay cold. And nights our, our days don't stay cold. When we have a, a cold snap like that, we call it a cold snap because it's that's about what it is. Snap your fingers and it's gone. But you know, sometimes our, some plants will die because it gets too cold for them. But let's see what 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 I've learned about this because I've known that it's a very very valuable herb. I've never collected it before because I have a man who mows my mows my lawn, and about the time I see it flowering, he comes and he mows it down and. I don't get it. So I moved some of it. Last year I moved some of it into my flower beds. So I would have it. So this is basically my front flower bed is essentially part of my herb garden also. 
Oh, there was one to be. I guess you saw that. So, let me see. It says, what I've read, it says that uh, an infusion of the leaves, it's a, it's a beverage. It's a, a very, supposed to be a very tasty beverage, and a weak infusion of the leaves can be used as an eye wash. It, it's, it's a treatment for styes and pink eye. And it's also taken internally, so not just as a wash or a gargle. It's also taken internally as an herbal tea to treat fevers, diarrhea, sore mouth and throat, internal bleeding, and weakness of the liver and the heart. It has an antibacterial action. It inhibits the growth of, of the bacteria Pseudomonas, Bacillus typhi, E. coli, Mycobacterium tuberculi, or tuberculi, tuberculosis. Is that what that is? And so it's been used as an alternative medicine internally and externally, <coughs> externally as an antibiotic and for hard to heal wounds and diseases. So this herb has been documented since before the history of travel in Europe and Asia and Japan. It's found growing in waste ground, grassland, woodland edges, and usually on basic or neutral soils, more so than acidic soils. It seems to grow just about everywhere. It grows a foot to two feet tall, creeping, self-rooting, tough, square, reddish stems branching at the leaf axis. You see, those stems are, are reddish, and they do. They branch right there. Let's get that out of the way. See, they branch at the leaf axis. So it pretty much just, it acts like a walking onion, if, you, if you're familiar with that. It falls over. If it falls over, then it roots at the nodes and it just keeps on going. So the leaves are blanch shaped. They're serrate. If you look at the edges of the leaves, the leaves are not exactly smooth. They're, they have a serrated edge. There's a better example right there. So the, the top lip of these flowers, they're, they're two-lipped, and the top, the top lip is purple. It's like a hood over the rest of the flower. As I said before, to me, it looks like a little, vi a look, it looks like little orchids. They're really pretty. Does what you think that looks like an orchid? Now, where I live, this blooms in May, and this is the early part of May, and this is when it generally blooms in my area. But other parts of the world, it blooms at different times, anywhere from June to August, depending on where you live. Now, it's easy to grow. It grows in damp, damp soil, or dry-ish soil. It doesn't like to be totally wet or totally dry. In fact, it'll grow thicker if it's in a more shady environment than it will if it's in the sun. If you had the seeds of it, this would be a good seed to winter sow, if you're familiar with that method, which is putting it in a container in soil, putting a top over it that has a vent in it to keep it from getting too hot inside and leaving it outside over the winter. It transplants and spreads easily. So, if you see this in your grass, it's not a weed. The man who does my lawn care thinks it's a weed. But I beat him this year because I dug up some of it and I put it in my flower bed because it it's also beautiful enough to be a flower. But this is the prunella coming up in my yard. So there's the one that has the flower on it. It's very recognizable as a prunella, the flower, beautiful flower. All through here, I see leaves. All of these leaves coming up in here are the prunella over in there. So I'm going to collect this. This 
these will not survive in the grass like this, as, but they are perennial, so they will come back next year. I'm just going to take some of the leaves and these flower heads right here because when my, the man comes to my yard Monday, they're not going to be here any longer. So I might as well go ahead and gather them now while I can before they're shredded up. We don't want these to be shredded up. I would rather have them dried and shredded up in a jar than shredded up as mulch on my yard. So I'm going to collect them. Hello. There's the basket. I've been collecting some right there. I'm just going to take this and just pinch out the tip. I'm just pinching out the tip like that. And I'll take the leaves. the leaves like that. Same thing on this one. Pretty flower, but I can dry the flowers. They'll be pretty. Pretty. And again, just take the leaves. I will just continue that and fill up the basket with prunella, and I will have enough to dry and to make some tinctures. Now look here in the basket. You can see the purple stems. So these, the purple on these are, on the stems, it's farther down on the stem, not, not right up close to the flower too much. Here's a flower right here, and it is relatively purple. You see that? There is some purple on it. Where is that? So there is some, there's purple in the stem all the way up to the flower, but not all of them. So this one right here, the stem is not as purple. But on some of them, they have a purple stem. It's not all of them. Okay, y'all. You may recognize these leaves from earlier in this video, but this is what the, what the flower heads look like after they've finished flowering. So this way, even if it's not in flower, but the pretty purple flowers, this is what it looks like. Then get down to its level. I'll show you better. So there we go. Now, so you mentioned earlier in the other in the other part of the video. I mentioned earlier in the other part of the video. This is what the leaves look like and this is how they join the stem. Square stems. It's in the mint family. what it looks like. It's pretty even when it's not in flower. That would be pretty in a dried arrangement. Okay. Bye y'all. See you next time.